Hello everyone, this is Farida Mukajanova and today I'd like to talk about well-being through music and singing. Let's have a look at the ways in which all of us can be healthier, happier, more creative using music and singing in our lives. By the way, this talk is not only for professional musicians or singers, it's for anyone and everyone. And let me tell you a little bit about myself, my story and why I'm interested in this topic. Why I decided to do this talk and introduce you to the ideas that I have found for myself. Well, my mom is a professional musician. She plays the harp, so I was exposed to music from early age, even before I was born, so I do love music. Uh, but she never insisted that I learned an instrument or I sang in a choir or did anything. So music was just always a big part of my life, but I never um, practiced it uh, consistently. And uh, not so long ago, I had um, an opportunity to take a course um, that was dedicated to this um, topic. And I learned so much um, with the help of this course. And I also discovered my own ways in which music can help us heal. So I'd like to share it uh, with you. So why is music so important? As we can see, um, in all cultures, in all countries, all over the globe, music plays and has ever played a big part. And it has always been very important. Um, and you can see that in any pantheon, in any mythological tradition, there are gods um, who play music or who invented musical instrument and they gave that to humanity. So basically music is a gift from God or rather gods. And here are a couple more ancient depictions of musicians singers and dancers and the most fascinating of all these I think are the petroglyphs from India that go back to the Neolithic, Neolithic times and we can see clearly that uh, some of the people here in the rock art are musicians they are playing some kind of string instrument a kind of harp and there are also guys um, who are playing some kind of wind instrument whatever it is so it's very clearly representations of music even back then it was so important um, that our ancestors wanted uh, to put it in this kind of form and i'd like to introduce you to a couple of ancient kazakh um, instruments um, that belong to my culture they are from Kazakhstan and in the first picture uh, on the left you can see two instruments that are both made of clay and the first one um, is called a sasernai and this means um, a clay whistle basically it's a kind of um, wind, wind instrument um, that was made of clay it had a number of holes and was quite popular. This one in the picture it goes back to the 12th century. Uh, and the second uh, clay instrument is called Dungrishek and it's more ancient. It's a kind of a rattle uh, and it comes from a kurgan of 6th, 7th century. And um, the picture on the right um, is a replica of an instrument called kobis um, and it uh, it was also found in a kurgan um, which also goes back to the 6th 7th century common era um, and it was reconstructed so this instrument has great significance uh, for uh, for kazakhs um, it was um, more than 
than something that produced music um, because it was used um, in sacred um, ceremonies, it was used in shamanistic rituals, it was used in healing and also it was played by common people. Uh, so I'm sure every nation, every country, any place on earth has its history with music. And uh, it's no wonder uh, that we are now using music um, to heal, to get better, and to get all kinds of uh, beneficial effects. So, as we all know, um, there is such a discipline, such a field as music therapy, and it's a clinical and evidence-based uh, use of music intervention. Um, and I think it's good to remember that in music therapy, um, we can create music, we can sing, we can move to or just listen to music. And all these ways to engage in music are all very, very healthy and very, very therapeutic. Um, and we will see um, the scientific basis for that in a second. Um, and I'll just just want to mention here that in my country, in Kazakhstan, once again, um, national folk instruments are used um, and one music therapist by the name of Kumuzhan Mukashova um, developed a method of using kobis uh, in this kind of music therapy. Uh, I have introduced you already to this string music instrument. And now I would like to talk a little bit about the brain and how music affects the brain. And that's why it is so important and so powerful. So what is the part of the brain, the region of the brain that's responsible for music? Well, it turns out all parts of the brain are responsive to music. Music affects all of our brain and let me just go through some of them one by one so you can appreciate uh, the beauty of music so we all have auditory cortex that is found in the temporal lobe and that's where we process what we hear um, well, we all have a frontal lobe and that's the part of the brain that um, analyzes music. Um, and this part of the brain um, can also inhibit creativity when we are over analyzing music uh, or the lyrics of a song and approaching, uh, approaching it too rationally, mm, too logically. Well, the occipital lobe um, processes images. So when we are picturing something in our mind, when we hear a tune, um, when we create images, this part of the brain is working actively. And um, this part of the brain um, works especially actively in, in the brains of professional musicians when they visualize music and see the music notes. And now let's go to the parietal lobe and uh, this part of the brain is active when we play a musical instrument um, just like cerebellum which coordinates movements when we dance when we move to music or when we mm, play a musical instrument again and this is the place where we store physical memory. And these memories are so strong that even people with uh, neurodegenerative disease who forget everything, who stop recognizing um, their relatives, they can still remember how to play a musical instrument. And they oftentimes remember their favorite songs, uh, both the music, the tune and uh, the lyrics. 
So that is why music is so important, so crucial in music therapy, uh, especially for those um, um, who have um, neurodegenerative um, diseases. Now there's Broca's area, which produces speech and actually playing a musical instrument, producing music can um, help us improve our ability to communicate better. Uh, Wernicke's area comprehends written and spoken language and it's a part of the brain that helps us uh, enjoy music. Um, then below the um, Cortex lies the limbic system and it's the seat of our emotions. Um, that is where our automatic rea reactions, our emotions are built. And this part of the brain is also very much involved in responding to music. Nucleus accumbens um, is the region of the brain where um, pleasure and uh, reward mechanisms happen and so this part of the brain plays a huge role in addiction uh, because at, it releases the neurotransmitter dopamine and so music can act as a sort of drug its effect is similar to opioids and music can become uh, a sort of drug uh, because our reward centers um, respond quite well uh, to music. Another part of the brain um, that is responsible for um, pleasure for music and also processes and triggers emotions is amygdala. And it can modulate our fear response. And um, for example, when we get shivers, um, down our spine listening to some beautiful piece of music that's actually our amygdala being activated. Um, then there is a hippocampus which produces and retrieves memories and regulates emotional responses and it also helps us navigate and so music can increase neurogenesis in this uh, part of the brain allowing production of new neurons and improving memory. Um, so music has that beneficial effect as well. The part of the brain that helps to maintain the body's status quo uh, is called um, hypothalamus and it links the uh, endocrine and nervous systems uh, and it's where all the essential hormones and chemicals are produced and um, our hypothalamus helps us regulate thirst, appetite, sleep, mood, heart rate, body temperature, metabolism, growth and sex drive. Um, so classical music, especially Mozart, um, all kinds of calming music um, help us gain the state of homeostasis. Um, so that's um, the Mozart effect when your heart rate and blood pressure reduce, your parasympathetic nervous system is activated uh, and you are resting and uh, recuperating. And um, hypothalamus can also help us reduce pain signals. And so that is um, a big part of the healing that happens when we muse, when we listen to beautiful music. Now a few words about the corpus callosum, uh, which helps uh, both of the um, hemispheres to work in unison. Uh, it coordinates our body movement and also the complex um, processes that take part in the uh, left side of the brain and the right side. So that is logic and intuition. Um, our rational mind and our creative mind. And finally, um, I'd like to mention putamen, which processes rhythm and regulates body movement and coordination. So music can increase dopamine production in this area, increasing our response to rhythm. 
And rhythm is a very important element of our life because even before we were we are born, we are exposed to the rhythm of our mother's uh, heartbeat, um, her rhythm of uh, breathing. Uh, so we know very well that a um, steady, regular um, rhythm, the rhythm that we like, that is comfortable for us, is something good. But whenever that rhythm is broken, um, that's a signal that something is not right. And so that is something that we shouldn't under, underestimate. Um, so that is an overview uh, of music and how it influences the brain. And I think it makes um, very obvious uh, why we shouldn't overlook music when we're trying to get healthier, to heal, um, and just to have more well-being in our lives. Now, uh, is there music that is good for everyone or music that is bad for everyone? Um, well, not really. Um, the thing is, uh, it's all individual and um, you should listen to yourself. Well, if you are listening to music and you like it, well, it means uh, it's good for you and uh, your brain is producing uh, hormones of happiness but if you are listening to something that you are not enjoying um, you are producing hormones of stress and so this music is not good for you but generally classical music um, is good for most people for the majority of people And now let's look at uh, some of the ways in which we can engage in music to get the uh, beneficial effects. Well, first of all, and the easiest is we can listen to music. And there are two different ways to do that. We can listen passively and we can listen actively. And the difference is when we listen to music, we are just listening to music as we normally do without paying too much attention, uh, listening in the music, uh, immersing ourselves in it, in it. But if we choose to uh, listen actively, then we are giving all our attention to the music uh, to get uh, a certain effect. So we can listen to music actively uh, to calm ourselves down or maybe to get a boost of motivation or a boost of energy and I encourage you to explore this kind of listening. Then there is um, there are different kinds of self-expression through music and singing. And we can approach it from a therapeutic uh, point of view. We can just uh, try making music, uh, producing music, engaging in music, uh, just to get a healing beneficial effect for ourselves. Or we can approach it uh, as a creative activity, trying to produce something beautiful that we can share with others. And another powerful way in which we can be healthier and happier and generally more well is to use music uh, for auto training uh, to send ourselves messages mm, and I will be talking about that in detail shortly now uh, First, I'd like to talk a, l a little bit about listening and how we can uh, listen to music uh, in a more conscious, mindful way. Uh, do not, not simply enjoy it um, uh, as people normally do without giving it too much thought, but um, to heal ourselves and um, and to be better as I was saying. 
Mm. We can listen in um, to ourselves, how we respond to music, uh, how our body responds to music, what happens to our heart rate uh, or mm, what emotions arise, what pictures are formed in our mind when we are listening, for example, to, um, mm, to some classical piece of music or to a particular song. Uh, that is uh, inner listening. Then there's uh, active listening that I have mentioned. We can listen to a particular piece of music because we want to get a specific effect. Uh, like we want to calm ourselves down or we want to energize ourselves or something else. Or we can practice deep listening when we are uh, using both of these uh, approaches to get the full effect uh, from music. And so, um, a practical way to approach um, listening is to make personal playlists. So these are playlists for a specific purpose and um, I want to give you just a few examples of uh, what these playlists uh, could be and what kind of uh, purpose they can have. So you could make um, your musical autobiography um, collecting all the songs that you've ever liked uh, from your early childhood through teenage years to your early 20s and so on and so forth um, that have significance for you, um, that evoke happy memories, that produce a very positive uh, effect on you so that whenever you need to get in that kind of uh, mood, whenever you want to maybe um, to go back to the happy, good times, um, you can turn to this playlist. Um, this could be a very good way uh, to recharge your um, ho uh, happy hormone tank. It's a good idea to create a relaxing and rest uh, playlist. Um, uh, obviously for whenever you need to relax and rest and restore your energy uh, quickly and effectively. Uh, that could be a playlist uh, for motivation uh, whenever you need a boost of that. Um, it could be um, a playlist with happy songs or uh, sad songs whenever you want to immerse yourself in feeling those kind of emotions and sad songs playlist could be helpful whenever you are feeling sad and you don't know how what to do with this feeling it's too strong but you want to process it then maybe um, listening to sad songs um, in your playlist could help you process it better uh, and faster and in fact um, studies have been made that have shown that listening to aggressive uh, music like heavy metal and um, music like that can have a beneficial effect on people who are already angry and irritated. Mm. Two groups of people um, in this kind of state were compared, those who did listen to aggressive music and those who sat in silence. So guess what happened? Uh, those who listen to uh, aggressive, angry music process their emotions better than those who just sat in silence. So that actually can be another playlist that you can have. Angry music. Uh, music for anger. Um, I suggest that you make a playlist for focusing and working. Um, so it's music that won't have um, any vocals, any lyrics, um, probably, and not to distract, but help you focus and concentrate on whatever you're doing. 
and there could be a playlist um, to nourish your soul your spirit to uplift you and to get that uh, very special spiritual or religious feeling that is very hard to put into words whenever you need that uh, so personal playlists that have a specific functional purpose uh, is a good idea and now let's also talk about how we can use music for comfort and so by that here I mean that music can be a very good way um, to de-stress to release all the stress that we build up in our lives uh, it can help us calm down uh, on a regular day for example before going to sleep uh, we can use music in different ways just to relax and unwind in different kinds of situations and uh, don't forget that music also boosts our feelings of safety and well-being and that is very important when we are struggling with some vague anxiety or feeling that something is not right uh, music can help us actually activate those parts of the brain that are responsible for feelings of safety and well-being maybe they are not um, working properly um, they are not exercised enough and other parts of the brain uh, are too active too reactive um, so that is something to bear in mind and let me introduce you to one awesome way to distress and to feel better and happier and that is singing and as a, um, an article from last year by BBC called it it's the world's most accessible stress reliever and it is it's completely free uh, it's accessible it's open to everyone and you don't have to be good at singing to get a beneficial effect and here are a few facts about singing and why it's so good well first of all it's an aerobic exercise we are actually exercising our vocal cords our lungs and as with any physical exercise uh, we produce dopamine that's why it feels good to sing we are also controlling our breathing so at the same time it's a breathing exercise and breathing has a huge uh, calming effect on, on ourselves um, Breathing techniques, breathing exercises are very, very powerful and singing is a kind of breathing exercise. And while we sing, especially when we sing in a group with other people, uh, salivatory immunoglobulin A or secretory immunoglobulin A is produced. And uh, as you can see from the name, uh, it's a chemical and that plays a big part in in our immune response so singing can improve our immunity uh, especially when we sing in a group and um, also when we sing uh, oxytocin is produced and it's a hormone that's responsible for bonding for trust uh, for a sense of well-being it's especially important for women who tend um, to tend and befriend in the times of stress for many women this is the default stress response so I would say singing is especially important um, and beneficial for women and as I have said communal singing uh, that is singing in a group is especially powerful um, it creates a feeling of unity it enhances our sense of empathy and social connectedness and can also produce a feeling that is called kama muta that is being moved by love a special kind of empathy that we can only experience as, as a sort of a peak experience of empathy when we feel mm, that we are moved to such a degree that our spirit our soul is responding um, 
and we experience that when we are in nature when we see something incredible or, or when we bond with other people in a very special ways and communal singing can also uh, produce this profound effect so there are many ways in which singing um, is healing and very very healthy and there are even some um, some researchers who believe that singing preceded speech and that's why it's so fundamental to our biological makeup and it's so 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 powerful and if you don't anyone to sing with that's not a problem mm. so many way uh, so many people turned to singing last year in lockdown and that might have been an intuitive uh, way um, to process all the stress all the anxiety all the fears and reconnect with people rebond with people which is very very important for our well-being and our happiness and so many people discovered ways um, you know to sing on their balconies to give home concerts um, to have online virtual singing parties and uh, here are a few ways that you uh, can find music partners uh, here is an app that I discovered it's called Smule it was I think it was um, created um, somewhere in 2008 or so it's quite old um, and it's a kind of social karaoke uh, where you, you can connect with people all over the globe and join in to sing the songs you like um, there is a free version uh, so you don't have to pay anything and if you want to explore this avenue i highly suggest it personally i enjoy it a lot and it has helped me with singing with feeling more com more comfortable and confident singing and here let me digress and tell you a little bit more about me and my story uh, because even though my mom is a professional musician um, she's uh, actually responsible for giving me a, a big psychological issue with singing a huge psychological block uh, for singing uh, because when i was a child and i really enjoyed uh, this activity and i was convinced that i'm a great singer i sing amazingly well she would say that that was horrible that i shouldn't be singing that oh my goodness i have no hearing my voice is awful and blah 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 and even though at first i couldn't believe that uh, it felt so wrong eventually i started believing my mom and uh, i accepted that as uh, you know as a fact because she's a professional musician she should know she she knows more than me about music right well wrong uh, the thing is my mom herself has this barrier she has this issue i can't remember a time when i heard her actually singing freely and comfortably out loud and she was just projecting it out on me and trying you know to <laughs> somehow solve it uh, through me mm, well and that's just a um, very weird um, psychological mechanism and i can understand that and uh, i'm so happy i was able to overcome this block and share this experience now uh, because throughout my life i was attracted to singing i wanted to sing and sometimes I even mentioned to overcome that and sing in public i did that in three different countries and now i look back and <laughs> i can't even imagine how i managed um, to do that in spite of all the fear i had and when i took this course this fear this block 
the singer's block came back to me in full force and it got out of hand um, I started thinking that people who sing out loud are just um, superheroes they are doing something supernatural that it's impossible for people to be singing out loud it's something wow um, but doing the course sharing um, my compositions uh, singing on small dim actually helped me guess get past this this barrier this block and to see how ridiculous it was in fact so i encourage you to start singing if you're embarrassed about it and also to try out this app you can do it for free uh, as i have said uh, just have fun just have fun because singing is really awesome not just because it feels good but because it does you good in many ways and here are a couple of other um, cool projects that I would like to share with you. Uh, one of them uh, is called Couch Choir that was done online uh, by Pub Choir. That is um, an awesome project from Australia where two girls, two musicians, uh, decided to share the joy of singing with people. Uh, they started um, inviting people to, to join in uh, in a pub, uh, to learn a song, to sing it, um, to have some drinks with friends and to have fun. And this idea uh, was great and many people loved it. And now they collect huge audiences of people who are um, having a time of their life singing. And during the lockdown, they were doing the uh, virtual uh, version of um, this choir um, well unfortunately it's not happening anymore uh, but you can still find some uh, funny and cute videos on the YouTube um, channel and another virtual choir by Eric Whitaker is um, a little bit more uh, professional um, choir Eric Whitaker is a composer, he writes music and so you can buy his compositions um, with this choir um, on his website but I just want to, to show you how many people joined in in this activity for the um, sixth virtual choir and I think it's just beautiful how music can really be something that unites us um, that bonds us and that is just makes us happier and more human and who knows maybe you'll invent the next awesome mm, singing thing uh, maybe you will just uh, want to try out some zoom singing karaoke parties with friends why not All right, another way in which we can use music for comfort is using lullabies. And um, I'd like to expand uh, the definition of a lullaby here. So it can be something that helps us um, go to sleep, uh, fall asleep, uh, but it can also be um, a simple song, um, a jingle uh, that calms ourselves down. So you can create a melody, you can create a song that um, follows um, the pattern of a lullaby. Uh, so it has a steady rhythm with a little um, variation. It's calming, it's soothing and create um, a message for yourself that will calm you down. And because we remember music so much better than just words, uh, things we say, uh, it will be much easier to remember this tune, this lullaby, uh, whenever you need um, to get um, to this um, feeling, this state of calmness. Uh, that's why it's a very good technique to use um, for self-mastery and for wellness 
So some other things that we can incorporate our lives and combine with music is using mantras and prayers in the traditional way that has been done. And here uh, a little bit of scientific um, background why mantras and prayers do work and uh, can they do have a real um, beneficial effect on, on our bodies and they can actually really heal us our cell ours, uh, can heal us sorry uh, it's through the rhythm through the pattern that almost all mantras and all prayers have it's been calculated uh, to be about 5.5 um, repetitions per minute that is five or six inhales per minute and uh, five or six exhales per minute and this steady rhythm is actually what um, starts uh, to put our body in a, uh, in a state of homeostasis uh, it normalizes and balances um, us out and our brain uh, begins to synchronize with this healing rhythm uh, so why not use it more consciously in our lives and uh, the mantras you chant can be your own mantras um, why not so breathing exercise which uh, I have already mentioned that's also a very powerful way mm, to get healthier and to calm down and there is no reason why we shouldn't combine them with music that also helps us get this effect so there is pranayama that has um, a lot of breathing techniques in case you want to uh, research and find out more um, we can also use a progressive muscle uh, relaxation uh, that is um, relaxing our body um, going through parts of the brain uh, parts of the body one by one for example we can start with our feet um, tense and then relax our feet then tense and relax our shins tense and relax our thighs and this pattern of tensing and relaxing tensing and relaxes and relaxing produces a, a very strong uh, relaxing effect um, that helps us de-stress and uh, calm down even more so i suggest you explore that if you are not familiar uh, with this uh, technique and we can also do body scan focusing on different parts of our body um, one by one we can see what's happening is any part of the brain is tense uh, is there any pain or any unusual sensations somewhere uh, do we need to pay more attention to a part of our body and it's a good idea to combine that with visualization so maybe we can send some light or some love to a piece of our body we can send ways of relaxation or ways of soothing there uh, in case that part of the, our body needs some special attention well and of course visualizations can be used to music that helps us get into the that state of mind so there are many ways in which we can combine music with wellness practices in so many ways and we can get double effect uh, from music and the technique we're using and now i'd like to tell you a few things about how we can be more creative and uh, produce music well, if this sounds too challenging, you can start uh, with just expressing through sound how you feel. Um, so just try different sounds um, that would 
be an expression would show that you're feeling happy or you're feeling sad, you're feeling hungry, you're feeling angry. Um, um, how would you express love? How would you express um, motivation uh, through sounds? Uh, just play around and have fun with that and you will see that um, you are quite creative and you can be creative with music and sounds and when you're comfortable you can try finding a music form for an idea message or situation uh, for example you can find a way um, um, to express for example your love for someone or something or maybe you are feeling sad and you want to create a tune um, to get it out uh, to process it mm. so it can be very simple it can be very simple uh, and it can be just for you uh, but these are just good ways uh, to get comfortable mm, with music and your own creativity and then of course if you get inspiration and you want to write something you want to compose a piece that's perfect mm. um, grab the bull by the horns mm. you can um, be creative and uh, create something for your own empowerment for example you can write uh, a simple jingle or create a personal mantra that will empower you that will have a a very special meaning for you and uh, you can be singing it or reminding yourself whatever you want to remind yourself uh, in the moments when you need it and just have fun it doesn't have to be something amazing it doesn't have to be a masterpiece you don't even have to share it with anyone um, just try uh, expressing yourself through music and sound to have a little bit of fun and maybe it's time for you to be heard, for your voice to be heard. Now I'd like to introduce you to the basics of songwriting. Um, this is a simple um, process that can help you uh, start writing songs. So if you've never tried it, that's fine because uh, before the course I've never even imagined that I can be writing songs or writing music and I thought that this is something that is way too hard and way too challenging for a person who has no mm, musical education, who has never played an instrument but it turned out that, it's, that it doesn't require any of these things it just requires creativity that we all have and the things that you write, the things that you produce can be very simple uh, but they will still be beautiful so the approach to take is to be like a child just be open don't try to create a masterpiece on your very first attempt uh, just try, just experiment uh, and have fun so the process is quite simple you should start with an intention and purpose so decide what you would would like to uh, to produce is the song uh, for yourself or for others is it a happy song is it a sad song what would you like to express uh, what is the topic and uh, if you have an idea of what it's going to be uh, it will define many things about your composition so the mood uh, the tempo the vibe and that's already part of the uh, part of the process then once you have that you start using your inner talent and resources you have so by inner talent, uh, I mean just your voice. We all have a voice, so we can produce sounds. Mm -hmm. We don't have to be super good at singing or to have an amazing opera voice, not at all. 
uh, but we all can produce some kind of music mm -hmm. and we can use the resources we have uh, like for example we have simple drums um, we can get spoons from the kitchen we can take um, we can take some keys so we can take some glasses and there you go you have some music instruments then we can decide on what structure uh, we want to have what is the song form and to begin with it can be something very very simple very very basic uh, something like a a b a where you have one phrase uh, that's your first A, then you repeat the same phrase, that's your second A, then you repeat this phrase but change it a little bit, maybe add um, some elements and that's your B, and then you end with another A, so the repetition of the original phrase. And this is a very simple structure but it is, it is used in many many different songs. Just think of the Beatles love love me do it's a very simple phrase a very simple song and yet it's beautiful and finally there is the executing part um, where you actually sing and uh, make music uh, and enjoy the end result another way to think of this process is starting with a goal, the intention, the purpose of what you're writing, so deciding um, your direction, then writing or improvising the song, uh, so that is the lyrics and the melody, and sometimes it can be just the melody without any lyrics, and finally recording the song and share it if you decide to do that. But I suggest that you do record uh, the songs that you write uh, for future reference and for your own enjoyment. Mm, you might see that they're not so bad, uh, so don't give up too easily. And here's what you can do for lyrics and for melody. Uh, so for the words, uh, you can rewrite the lyrics of an existing song. Maybe you can make a funnier version or your song can have a different ending just let your imagination flow and tell you what to do you can take an existing poem or a short set of phrases and turn that into a song or you can write a totally original song uh, with your own poem or something that you composed for this specific occasion and for melody, uh, just improvise, just try different, uh, different tempos, different rhythms, and try experimenting with elements. You can use mouth percussion, and that is the sounds that you can produce with your mouth. So maybe you can whistle, maybe you can make the beat with just like pam 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 will produce all kinds of sounds like chik 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 mm. again it's up to you. Um, you just use your imagination you can also use your body for body percussion that's the, that is everything from <coughs> clapping to snapping your fingers to using your body as a kind of drum you can have, uh, if you have instruments, of course, you can use them or you can repurpose something as an instrument. And um, remember to use ad-libbing and that is singing freely and it's all that ooh, la la la, yeah, yes, and all those things um, that add character to a song. So there are basically very simple steps to composing something and there's a variety of ways to make it very interesting and original. Um, so hopefully now that 
I've broken it down, it doesn't sound too challenging, uh, too impossible, and you will try it out. And personally, I'll say that I enjoyed the process of songwriting quite a lot during the course, and uh, I was feeling very self-conscious, uh, but I had to share uh, my compositions uh, with my fellow students and um, looking at what others wrote, uh, comparing my own work, uh, I could see that I didn't do such a bad job and actually it's not that difficult. Uh, just give it enough thought, uh, uh, just think it through and if you, if you need, um, rewrite something or um, take another shot at it and I'm sure you can pr produce something beautiful and maybe you'll win the next Grammy, who knows? Um, if you'd like to use um, software, here are some suggestions from the course. Well, I'm not a huge fan of electronic music, so I skipped that step. But speaking of Grammys, mm, I just have to share this with you. So Kazakhstan's first Grammy is, uh, this is incredible. It was won by a guy who's not even a musician. Emanbek Zikenov won it for the best remixed recording this year. And this guy is only 20. He's a DJ, he's a, an arranger or sound engineer or whatever you call it, but he's not a musician. And uh, so if he can do it, uh, why not you? And another way in which uh, music can enhance our well-being and wellness in general is using it for awakening. So we can use music and chanting to bring joy and awakening to our mind, body and spirit. Um, so we can get that very special feeling, that spiritual communion, that very religious kind of feeling whenever we m listen to the music we resonate with and that is also profoundly healing, profoundly nourishing um, for all parts of ourselves and it's something that is very difficult to put into words uh, but it works and of course here uh, you need to find something that works for you, something that you respond to uh, but don't forget that music can be um, used in this way as well uh, to nourish your spirit. And there are um, traditional ways to use it like meditation and mantra, focusing your attention on um, on something uh, on your spiritual um, experience and music can also help us get into a hypnagogic state and this is the state between um, waking and sleeping and in this state we are highly highly suggestible so why not use that uh, for, our own, for our own good uh, we can use this time uh, to practice affirmations, uh, to, to implant new ideas and new beliefs into our system, uh, to sing our personal mantras and to send messages to ourselves and music can help us get there. Music can also give us the peak experiences, the most intense, the most profound experiences uh, we can go through in life and music can put us in the state of flow. Um, this is again something that is hard to put into words but it's been shown empirically that it increases our creativity and people who experience flow can solve problem much more easily and more effectively in novel ways. And uh, 
wonderful thing about that that the next day after you experience a state of flow you are still being very creative and how cool is that and if music helps you get into that uh, state of mind um, in flow then you definitely should be using it more and in a more conscious and mindful way so what kind of uh, message would you like to send to yourself what kind of mantra uh, what kind of jingle can you create for yourself? Uh, and here are some examples. It can be something empowering, like I can do it. Or maybe it's a blessing that you would like to give to yourself. May I be protected and safe. May I be contented and pleased. Maybe it's something that will inspire you. Maybe it's something of self-love. Maybe it's something that uh, helps you overcome any fear. Well, you decide for yourself. Just make sure mm, you have a personal mantra and it helps you in your life. And so summarizing the things, uh, how we can use music for our health, for our well-being, uh, for a happier life. Um, here are some practical things that you can do. Well, first you can create personalized functional playlists uh, that serve a specific purpose, that give you a special effect. And of course here you should uh, choose the songs that actually do work for you and don't uh, underestimate um, the effect on, of music on you and how you feel. Uh, I highly encourage you to start singing if you're not doing it already. Uh, try out social karaoke with the, the app I mentioned, Smule, or with your friends. You, know, you can do it in person if it's safe uh, to do so, or you can maybe organize some virtual uh, social karaoke gigs. Uh, try out song writing with a simple process that I've introduced you to and create your own mantras, your own jingles, and maybe create your own songs, your own music. And if you'd like to share your experiences, um, your victories, big and small, uh, your thoughts, please go ahead, go ahead and do that in the comments. I would love to hear back from you. And I really hope uh, that helps you and you can use music to heal to get better, um, to overcome your inner obstacles and barriers and be healthier, uh, be happier and be more creative. So have fun with music. And if you want to connect with me, you, you are welcome to do so. Uh, I'd love uh, to hear back from you and um, see you next time. See you in the next video in, or in the next uh, online event that I'm going to host. Uh, you will see, um, you will find the links mm, to these mm, resources in the, in the video description and I will also include um, the links to resources in case uh, uh, you want to learn more. And once again, I encourage you um, to leave um, your ideas in the comments and to share your experiences. I hope you have fun with music and bye.